Hello everybody and welcome to another episode oh, of Mixed Mo's. I've got my little Riley boy here today, Sandy. Got a day off. Mrs. P has gone out shopping I'm and Josh is happy. Ha You're not very happy? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Fair enough. That's, that's a good enough answer. Josh is having his hair cut in the conservatory, so uh, we can't really go in there. Um, so we thought we'd come down and do a little video, don't we, eh? Yeah. Yeah, do a little video. And today we're going to be doing a, a Hater 56 Pro. Uh, the old-fashioned one with the Intec engine and the side uh, side belt driven uh, roller assembly one. Um, I picked it up off a of Facebook marketplace. I paid a little bit more than what I would normally pay for uh, a mower like this, um, only because they do sell for really good money when they're up and done. Um, but the woman was selling it as spares or repair. Um, so I said to her, because you're asking the, the right money for the mower, um, can I come over and do some simple checks? Just want to check for compression, see if it's got a spark and all that sort of stuff, make sure the crankshaft isn't actually bent. Uh, that's a general idea. So she said, yeah, come on over, do your checks, do whatever you want to do. I'm happy, happy for that. And uh, off I went. So I um, give it a couple of pulls. It wouldn't fire at all. I didn't see a spark, um, although this, the spark plug was, was a bit a bit mucky, but it's got plenty of compression. The crankshaft isn't bent, so I was happy with it. Um, at the very least, I might have to buy a new coil for it, is what I'm thinking, but I do have some spares here anyway. So I purchased a lawnmower, bought it back, and uh, that's as far as we've got. We're gonna take it outside in a minute. It's on the stand at the moment. Take it outside and uh, try and give it a fire up, see what we can't do. And then hopefully, if the machine runs and does what it should do, and the drive all works, then we're, in, we're, we're quids in. Uh, it begin the paint job. I have already purchased, um, if I looked at the, the advert. Uh, yeah, right, show, show the guys. Um, a new um, hater sticker. Uh, for the front, this is, okay. it says hater. This is not the right sticker for it. This is for a 41. Um, the 56 one's a lot bigger, but do you know what? It, it'll do the job. Some had a bit of a paint sticker. job. Have. Yeah, sticker, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You can't don't undo it yet, because Dad's going to put, put it on the mower later on. Um, but these are the ones with solid aluminium decks. It's, it's got to be sort of grinded back. That's a lovely cuddle. I love a cuddle. And a kiss as well. Fantastic. Um, so, high five. Um, so let's get it down dirty, and let's see what we can't do with this Hater 56 Pro. Right, here's a Hater 56 um, Pro engine uh, with the Intec engine. Um, this has got the side, the side belt, as I said, on the side, on my side here. It's a big, heavy old lump. These are solid aluminium decks, and you, if a drive doesn't work on these, you know, you know you're pushing it. Um, the pull cord is slightly um, frayed. It doesn't need a new pull cord. I've got a feeling it was used X commercially. It's got an H9 written on here. Um, which I think is some kind of council, possibly, or something on that line, or is it's a number. It might have had 10 of these, whoever, whoever owned it previously or originally. Got the grass box, a few nicks and pieces in there. Uh, but when I first got the machine, um, it, uh, it wouldn't start or run or do anything. So I'm just going to simulate that now uh, onto choke. The pork was about to snap right at the very end as well. I can see it right there. It's about ready to snap. So that's onto choke, and as you can see, the machine is not firing at all. Plenty of compression. So it's doing nothing at all. Let's get it up on a bench um, inside the shack and we'll have a little look see what we can't do. Um, this is a manual operated choke one, so I want to I check the, uh, the throttle cable. That throttle cable looks a little bit a bit loose, not doing its, not doing its job. Um, I didn't muck about it too much when I picked it up off a lady because the last thing I want to do is to get the machine running um, when I'm actually trying to buy the machine. So I only gave it three or four pulls, just like I did there. Um, let's get it up on the bench, have a little look at it, see what we can't do. Right, so the Hater 56 is now up on the bench. Uh, the first thing I've noticed actually is this throttle arm, it seems really, really low, and it's going up at sort of a right angle, so to speak, and it's got so many little dinks and bumps in it. And this here, it seems to be very, very light, just here, compared to the rest of the cable. No, I didn't touch any of this. No. And that's, you know, see, see how that's all loose? Where? Now, I've got a feeling that that's not actually choking. And as you can see, the cable pushes all the way down. See that, look, see how it pushes down? No. So that's not actually doing its job. So let's, first of all, let's remove the air filter. Oh, that'd be an eight mil on there. Uh, about an eight, eight mil. Let's remove the air filter, so see what that looks like. I have already pre-ordered an air filter for this. It should be the oblong, the oval shaped one, which is that one there, yeah, that's cool. And uh, it's well used. A hairbrush? Uh, no, it's not a hairbrush, it's an air filter. What's it for? Um, 
So we can't now see if this is choking yet. We want the eight mil again, and what we want to do is set it to choke on this machine, which is there. And then I want to undo very gently, not all the way, these here, just to bring uh, the, the air box back. And now I can at sneak a peek inside and I can actually see that that's not actually choking this machine. So I don't want to move it too much because I want to show you whereabouts it was. So I'm trying to keep that throttle exactly where it, where it is without doing anything. Let's try and remove this throttle assembly without moving that cable anymore. I'll keep an eye on it as I do it. There it goes. I'll keep it all exactly where it is. And then we'll see how much this is actually choking or not choking. Two seconds, Riley boy. I'm going to touch nothing just yet, my, yeah, little, my little buddy. What did you find? So that, that's here. where it was just there. I pull here. All right, buddy. So that's where it actually was just there, okay? Now with the air box removed, you should be able to see that that's actually not choking at all. That little carby was not on choke. So I'm guessing that this cable has either slipped or something's happened. Um, so now if I, if I force the choke on, it's still not choking. So there could be a little problem just here. Let me show you. This is quite common with the um, with these, these style of engines. Let me just show you very quickly. I've come across this little issue before. So just here, you've got a little tiny um, choke uh, butterfly flap just there, you see? See that? Now, this is activated by this little tiny uh, prong just here. And when I choke it now, it won't actually go past. It's catching on this um, on this edge of this butterfly, just very slightly. So that might be the reason why. So if I get a pair of long nose pliers, and what I want to do, this has got a slight bend in it here, you see. So what I want to do is just ever so slightly try and get hold of it and give that a little tiny bend just inwards. Not much. About there should be enough. So now the idea is, is when you activate this choke, I can now get rid of this frock cable. Um, this little tiny flap just here, this one here, should go into this butterfly here. And it wasn't before. So now it goes in, and then when you choke the machine, it's still not choking all the way yet. It wants to go a little tiny bit more to activate the full choke. But you see, it, it, it see it's catching. So it's not actually doing its job. And that's got to go all the way that way. So let's bring that back out. And I want to literally put that, put that piece straight to about there. That's really straight now. So now when you choke it, it's a touch more. There should, be a little, there should also be a little tiny um, spring on here as well. There it goes, that's in and choking. Now it's choking. Not choking fully, because it's missing a little tiny spring just up here, which goes on the end of here, which, which, which forces it over, okay? So I need to fit a new spring onto there, but it, that, that now is choking a lot better than what it was. I want to try and get it to choke a little bit more if I can get it, which will be twisting it back this way slightly. I don't want to snap nothing, that's the idea. There you go, it's a bit better. That's asking for choke. And with the spring on top, that will then push that choke all the way over. We knock it back, it, it do its job. So yeah, it's actually missing a little tiny spring that sits up on here and loops back under here somewhere. Uh, probably, on, probably on this little tiny clip just here. Little tiny spring that goes onto there. I'll have a look so I can find one. The quantum ones will fit it. It's exactly, exactly the same um, carburetor effectively. So that's the reason why I think this little machine is not firing because it won't actually go, won't actually go on to choke. Um, it's, it's three quarters choking now, which is better than what it was. Now, do you remember what I was talking to you about um, the other day about um, Smith McGuinness syndrome uh, on my last live stream, for those of you who are watching? And do you remember what I said that my little lad's got a, a reversed circadian rhythm where he sleeps during the day and um, uh, not at night? Well, the time is now roughly about half past 11. And as you know, um, a certain somebody has been sat beside me for quite a while and uh, he's gone very, very quiet. The reason is, he's fallen asleep. 
my little tiny boy has fallen asleep. And that's for life I lead. Where it doesn't matter wherever we go, <clears throat> whatever we do, that little lad can fall asleep on the side of a cliff, as far as I'm concerned. He will sleep absolutely anywhere. Um, so unfortunately, um, I'll have to get him sorted out in a bit. I did remove the H-Tilly all, already uh, prior to recording, just so it's safe uh, to work on the engine, as you always would. But that seems to be the reason why this machine won't, won't fire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this cable back on. Uh, it's, it, oh, you're back awake, are you? Okay. Okay, buddy. Um, I might have to renew, I might have to renew this, this cable at some point because it doesn't look like it's got enough throw on it. So the first thing I want to do, um, I'm happy with that to a degree. I only need to get the spring, I need to get the spring for it. Um, but hopefully that will choke. It's a little bit better than what it was beforehand. I can't get to run any further over at the minute. So um, let's put the, uh, let's put the air box back on. Sorry, buddy, am I keeping you awake? You're all right, mate, no problem. You always notice Riley's um, temperament goes right off when, uh, when he's tired. He, that's when he's at his worst because of his, uh, because of his syndrome. His, 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 uh, his temperament goes, yes, buddy? Now. Yeah, his temperament goes right off. So what I'm gonna do, hang on, mate, two seconds, let's try and do this. I'm now gonna choke this machine by hand. It's set to choke up the top as well. So now I just wanna get this screw do you see how much how much play it was up here? And there's a, there's a, a shiny bit just there. So now I just want to set this choke by hand. Very loosey-goosey. Pull this cable back. Now some of you are asking how to set the chokes on here. So that is about full throttle, but if you pull this choke all the way back now. Two seconds, mate. I'm not, not going to fire it up, mate, no problem. No, please. Yes, fine. By, by pulling that back now, that is now fully choked. And that's where the cable wants to be. So let's now do that up. And then we'll do this up as well. Up. Two seconds, mate, I've got to get this done. You sort, you sort of come to the wrong place to get your head down. What? You sort of come to the wrong place to get your head down. Yeah. Okay, that's the airbox now in. So now, just want to have a look at this cable. That's on choke, half throttle idle, stop. So now it's doing its job. So we're gonna take it back outside and see if we can't get the machine to fire now. I'll put the HTL back on. Um, and try and get it to fire up. If it fires up, we're in the money. The crankcase breather pipe's gotta go back on as well, which would be up here. That's actually the wrong, the pipe seems very, very long to me. Um, it's got to have a kink in it. Uh, which would be another reason why it's not running right. I'm trying to get a crankcase breather pipe on. Yeah, it's got a big kink in that. I'm not happy with that at all. Um, and sort that out. Uh, it should have a better, a better sort of angle to it. A better angle dangle. Um, it's not right. It's just blown air, blown air straight out. Yeah, it's not quite right, buddy. I'm going to sort that out in a bit. But let's try and take it outside, try and get it to fire, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've hated 56 now. Hopefully, the throttle is working as it should do. I may still have to put a new cable on that. We shall see. But hopefully now it'll run. HTL has now been connected. Uh, as I say, it's got all in it. Let's have a little look, see what happens. She said it was running a month prior to me, to me picking it up, so it's not been that long. Let's have a little look. and it's already on full adjustment. I think I've got a spare belt for this in the shed. So the engine starts, it comes onto choke, off a choke, uh, runs onto, uh, onto idle. There's a height adjustment all works, which is good. No drive though, need to check the drive out. I'll get, a, I'll get a socket in a minute, we'll check that drive out, see what's happening. Um, let's try and fire it up one more time, off of choke, which is there. My feet fix, Riley. There you go. Starts up, starts up an absolute 
absolutely lovely. Which, which these do. As long as they're choking fine, then uh, they start up lovely. But the drive's not working. I'm going to get a 10mm socket and we'll just inspect and see what's going on with that drive. So, just gonna grab a quick 10mm socket because I just gotta remove the side cover off of the, um, the throttle assembly, uh, off of the, uh, the drive assembly. So I wanna see what's happening when I, um, I wanna see what happens when I engage the drive. So it's just literally a 10 mil socket, which will remove this side bit here. And then you'll be able to tell, there's a the belt. The belt's in place there. Uh, let me just tip it up ever so slightly, right, boy, myself, boy. Okay, buddy. I uh, just want to double check, it's actually on the pulley at the back here. Don't know yet. Yeah, it's all on the pulley. Just want to put my hand under here, feel if the adjuster is working, which it is. There's, a, there's an idle adjustment screw, that's all working. So now, if I start it up again, I want to see uh, this shaft spinning, because there's two pins here. I want to see that spinning, and I want to see this belt being tensioned up and catching on the pulley. That's the idea. Let's have a little look, see what it does. So onto full throttle. So as you can see, the shaft here is spinning and the pulley is spinning. When I engage the drive, that should now tension up. It's just not quite. The belt is trying to move, but it's sliding. I dare say throughout the time it's been running, uh, that belt um, has slackened off. Now you can adjust these. You can adjust these here, which is already at full adjustment and you can adjust it here, which is already a full adjustment, so there's no more adjustment to be had. So hopefully, um, the belt I've got will fit this. Um, I've got one spare hanging up, and um, we'll uh, try and fit a new belt onto it and see if we can't get the drive to work. So let's pop it back into the shed, back on the bench, and we'll have a look to see if this drive system will or not work with a new belt fitted. Okay, so um, come to the, come to, the um, decision that the, uh, the drive belt's actually no good. And looking at the teeth on this, uh, they look particularly blunt. Now I've got another blade, another belt here, and we'll do some calculations in a bit, but th this belt is brand new, never been used. It's up on my store. Um, this belt number is a 4887 uh, belt, which I got for eBay a little while ago, uh, for haters. Uh, I do also stock the Hater 41 belts as well, what have you, because they are common to go, so. Got a spare 856 belt. Now these are very, very simple um, to change and, and, and pretty much anybody can do it, okay? They're, they're not difficult at all. So all you want is a, is a half sensible flat-headed driver. That's all you need for these, okay? Uh, the only problem is, is that these are very, very heavy um, machines. So you gotta be a bit careful when you're lifting them. But all you wanna do is just literally slide this belt out from under this guide. That's the first thing you want to do. Bring the belt over. See how slack that was, okay? Bring that over, and then you want to tip the machine up onto its side ever so slightly. Let me just get it positioned so it doesn't fall on top of my head, because they, as I say, they are a very heavy machine. I'd like to be somewhere about there, it'd be nice. Okay, now up in here, let me show you where we are. Let me bring you guys up just a touch. Okay, so up inside you've got your idler pulley and there's your belt for the uh, back roller, okay? Now all you want to do is just get hold of this belt and just literally manhandle it off. Just get hold, lift it up over the top of the pulley. There it go, because there's so, it's so much slack in it. Just feed it round. Give it a bit of a twist. And that belt just comes off that pulley, okay? It goes all the way up and you can pull it up to the front of the machine. So with that belt now off, we can now lift the machine back onto its wheels and roller. Bring it back round. And now we're sort of, let me bring it back into shot. Sorry for moving the camera about, but you know, sort of, it's so easy to do. And now with that belt, you can now bring that belt all the way up. Okay. And now you've got one more guide pin around the back. And out it comes. That's as simple as it is. Now the new belt I've got is is same size, maybe a little bit shorter. This would have stretched, but the teeth, the difference in teeth in the groove is second to none. Look at the difference. The, these teeth are well worn. Okay, absolutely shot to bits. Yeah, the reason a lot wider. So with the old belt now taken off, all you want to do 
is push the belt all the way down as far as it would go. Okay, we'll, we'll retrieve the other end of it a bit later on. Okay, so once that belt's been removed, all you want to do then is just thread your new um, belt through. Okay, don't hook up to, to the front one, the front pulley just yet. Through, thread it through past the front pulley so it's not connected, and then over the back onto um, the back pulley. Now you want to get this little tiny little pair along those pliers and push them up so that the the belt is actually over the back of the top of the big pulley, like so. Okay. Once it's over the back, you can then fish that over the pulley on the back, and then you can then loop it over the top of the idler pulley. I just want to put it back this way a touch. It's going to get caught otherwise. That's it. Just pull it in, okay, and then loop this belt over the top of the idler pulley or tensioner pulley, and then fish that onto the actual system itself. So now you can see it's on the back pulley, it's gone over the top of the idler or tensioner pulley, and now you'll have the slack on this side over here on the small pulley on the front, and I'll show you how to fit that very quickly. Okay, so now the belt is on the back pulley and on the idler pulley, all you now need to do is get your pair of long nose pliers, or screwdriver, whatever it was you were using, and push the belt over the bottom side of this pulley first. Okay, push it over the guides, both sides. And now what you can do, with the HT lead now removed off of the engine, so the engine is now safe, it won't start, you can now pull this pull cord, and by holding the belt down, a little bit of therapy, you'll see that this will now start to feed in the start to feed in the belt, okay? But the HT lead must be off when you do this. It gets to a certain point and it won't go anymore. So get a pair of long nose pliers like I showed you and just push it down past that point, okay? That's the only point where it's getting stuck on. Make sure it's within the guide pins. Give it another little pull. Just push the belt down and you'll see that belt now start to form its shape where it needs to go, which is just about there. That belt is now on, on both of those pulleys, okay? And lots of slack. So the next thing we need to do is take up the slack. We need to adjust this cable just here to bring the slack out. And then also this, um, this here, uh, you can um, slacken that out as well to take some adjustments. So let me adjust it. Um, I want to put it on uh, about half tension and then we go back outside and see if we haven't actually got this uh, this drive now to work. So let me adjust it, I'll be back in two ticks. Um, I'll put the grass box back on. And this one now I want to check for um, for drive. Now, as you all know, if you put engage the drive lever and pull it backwards, it locks off, which it is now doing. So I've adjusted it just here on this throttle end. And I've still got two more holes to go off. So let's put it onto choke and fire the machine. And I want to see if the drive is actually uh, going to work or not. So let's have a look. No start. There you go. So the machine started, now let's check the drive. Be like he man, but now the driver works by engaging with the lever and pushes the engine along. Lovely, so there you go, fixed it. Absolutely fantastic. 8056 Pro now all up and running, and the drive now works also. A quick little belt fix, um, which cost about, about eight quid, I think a belt was a copy belt for eBay. I've got a new sticker for it. I'm going to do a paint job on another video, otherwise this video would be too long. It now starts and stops exactly as it should do, and also the power drive now works, because trust me, you do not want to be pushing one of them all day long. It will make you sweat like an absolute pig. Um, but yeah, super, super fix, and uh, cheap, cheap for I paid for it, and hopefully will return a pretty little penny. So in the next video on this particular model, you should see me stripping it down, hopefully right back to bare aluminium, and then I'm gonna paint it back up, give it a nice coat of lacquer, put a new sticker on it, spray the handles up, repair the box, and it should look pretty, pretty good. And hopefully it'll sell either this year or next year. I'm not really worried, I just winterize it if need be. Uh, but it will fetch a pretty penny when it does actually sell. 
Um, if this is your first time watching Mixed Mars, hit the subscribe button, whack a bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take care easy.